I just think it's it's nice to have something of visual interest on the layout. Hi there to you. It's really great to see you again. Welcome back to the channel here on Wear Yard with me, Jenny Kirk. And today it's an update video on Wear Yard. What have I been up to? Well, actually, I thought I'd let myself loose on a couple of really intriguing little projects using some products from various different companies. So coming up today, we're going to be having the review and fitting of the scale model scenery uh, flickering bonfire and also the flickering brazier. Now these are lighting effects which can really easily be wired into your layout just to add that little bit of something extra, those focal points of interest. We've also got an Econ signal. Now uh, I don't have a lot of colour light signals on Wear Yard but I am trying to build it up so I'm really pleased to have been able to have picked up one of the Econ signal kits and I'm looking forward to building that and fitting it in on Wear Yard so we can have a little bit of a coverage of the wiring of that in and let's see where we get with it. Also got some Pico Scale Scene uh, speed restriction signs. These are a familiar sight from all over the network going well well back so I'm going to be looking up do I paint these yellow or do I paint them white and that will all come clear as we get through the video and of course all the other bits and pieces that I've been working on up here on Wear Yard. So don't forget to check out today's channel sponsor, Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. And uh, you can find all the details of them in the description box down below, including their UK supplier. So come with me, really looking forward to showing you what I've been up to. <laughs> So these are the products that I've bought. Um, we've got the Bonfire, which is that one, uh, Brazier, which is that, both of these from Scale Model Scenery. Uh, we've got a link in the description down below if you want to go and have a look for yourself at these. Uh, also got some Pico Model Scene uh, speed restriction signs. Now I had to think about these, uh, I don't know whether to do them in white or yellow. It shows them on the packaging in yellow. Uh, I'm going to go that way, I think. But uh, I suspect when they were first introduced, they were probably painted white. Uh, quite a few things were painted white for uh, visibility reasons. And then somebody worked out yellow actually registers in the human brain uh, better than white for um, you know hazards. Uh, one of the reasons why wasp stripes work, uh, we're programmed to not like wasps, so we pay attention to where they are. So I've got a uh, Humbrol uh, enamel number 99, which is a matte colour. I'm going to use that on those. So that's something that I'll be working on. I'm going to put that there. And then one of the other things that we've got to do is this Econ Colour Light Signal Kit. This is a distant one. Uh, I've also got a home one actually already installed on the layout. Um, but I've got a spare switch, which is an on-on switch. That means that uh, you can switch a two between two permanently on uh, light feeds. So we can effectively light up the green or the yellow permanently. And uh, I've got a spare switch for doing that in my control panel so I thought I might as well get one of these as well. I think it'd be quite nice, visually quite appealing. Uh, and with this I don't think there's any uh, painting really required on this so it's just really a case of putting it together. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll come back to that. Uh, but the bonfire and the brazier uh, need a degree of painting first. I'm going to test them. I've got uh, somewhere over here I'll just bring it into shot. Uh, it's my Hornby Cheap and Cheerful uh, controller. This actually came with the Harry Potter set. And what I'm going to do is use that as a DC power source just to get these up and running. If I turn it back over, there's the picture of what it should look like once it's in. Uh, same with the brazier actually. I think it's going to look quite interesting. 
um, but it suggests dry brushing very small amounts of various different colours just to give it a sense of being burnt and charred. Although the wood, as you see it, is actually already looks a little bit distressed in there, which is quite nice. I suspect that what they actually use is some of the offcuts from when they do their laser cut kits and uh, so you've got that kind of burning charring from the laser. It's actually a really good way of uh, of making use of what would otherwise be waste I guess. Uh, so in terms of colours I'm going to use some of this yellow as well so that'll come into play. Um, might do a bit of, of red maybe. I don't know will that be overkill? Not sure, no, maybe that's too much. Possibly orange, um, actually quite an old tin. I don't even know whether that's still usable in there. Uh, certainly that's been around the block a few times. Um, we've got some white, matte 28, I'm gonna use in there. And it suggests black for charred wood. And uh, I've got satin 85. My matte 33 is actually on loan to my father. He's building battleships at the moment, scratch building them from card. So he's got my matte black, which is very annoying. So I think I'm going to discard the red. Um, I suspect the orange will probably overpower it. And actually, yeah, I'll just stick with the instructions. Just use these two just to give a, a sense of something going on there. So first up, uh, what I actually want to do is get these running. There's not a huge amount to them. I take it out of the packaging there. And we're just going to be drill, drilling a hole in the baseboard that these wires will go through. And uh, I think the best thing to do here, let's pair the wires. And this way I can plug them into my power source. And these only work in one direction. So I've got a couple of chop blocks here. And one of the tricks that I do with these, is you can actually make an effective adapter for that Hornby. So if we could take the end from this and trusty screwdriver set. So what I do, and this is a really handy hint for uh, connecting to a lot of things. Uh, I find that these controllers are actually great for a cheap power source for things like lighting effects as you build them up around the layouts. You don't want to overstress your uh, your main uh, power source. So I'm just going to try and squeeze that in there. I think that's yeah, there we go. And of course, these power supplies, um, you can switch the polarity if you find that you've, that nothing happens when you turn them on. And let's put that in there as well. So let's give it a whirl. And I've got the Hornby power supply. Nothing's happening. So let's try it the other way around. I can see just down in there, you can just about see that twinkling fire effect, which is uh, actually quite nice. What's interesting is I can drop the voltage right down. And it doesn't, not until you go down really quite low does it affect the brightness, and then it goes off at about two volts. So I won't run these at the full 12 volts. I think that um, that might be quite nice to um, run it on one of the other circuits. Let me just turn that light off. You'll probably see that a little bit better there. That really is a nice effect with that uh, flickering fire. So let's just get this light back on. So uh, let's have a look at the brazier as well. They both work in exactly the same way. So we've got kind of like a barrel stuffed full of wood. And we'll see what this one looks like when it's up and running. I just think it's it's nice to have something of visual interest on the layout. So again, I'll just turn this light off just to give it, oh, my word. Oh, and you can see that the barrel is painted such that you get that glowing effect through the bottom of the bar barrel as well. That's interesting. 
Very interesting. Oops. Just tugged one of these wires out. Let me just put that there. Yeah, so there we go. That's how all this works. What I will do is just dry brush some of the different colours onto the, uh, the, the wood there. And it's probably a bit of a boring process, so I'm going to come back when I've done. Well, I've done all the painting so far, so you can see on the speed restriction signs very carefully. I uh, painted the poles black, um, even though I probably didn't need to, and also painted the numbers and some of the arrows. I'm not going to use all the arrows, there wasn't much point in painting them on every sprue. I'm just going to leave those to one side to dry, so they'll be up there. Oops, just <laughs> put my finger in the black paint, still a bit sticky and some very subtle dry brushing effects. You can't really see on the brazier, but you can a little bit on uh, on this. Um, looking at that, I think I probably need a little bit more black. I'm just gonna, uh, gonna quickly do that. So I've added a little bit more dry brushing and uh, reasonably happy with that. Toned down the base as well with some of the black paint. So when it goes uh, into the model, uh, that hexagonal, is it hexagonal? Yes it is, hexagonal base won't really show up. So I'm going to put these to one side and uh, let them and the uh, speed restriction signs dry. I'm going to move on to the colour light signal. Uh, now this is from Econ and uh, I've built one in the past, it was a little while ago. I don't remember it being particularly difficult so Let's just get this out of the packaging. Keep the uh, picture from the front just for reference if we need it. And uh, let's see what we've got in here. They do seem to come with some fairly comprehensive instructions. I'm guessing it's quite important with things like the resistors to get them in the right place. And uh, also to make sure that uh, we get the LEDs connected up the right way around. So you see there, what we actually get is we've got the resistor for the common return, the LEDs and signal head, a few other plastic pieces and the uh, the rod, the pole, even for uh, the actual main stand of the signal. So I'm just going to put all that to one side and always important with these to read the instructions unless you are very, very good with uh, electronics. Uh, there's no real risk in winging this. So this exploded diagram uh, gives you a really good uh, idea of how everything should go together. Place the base on a flat hard surface and insert the post. So we've got quite a few different bits and pieces on here. So let's start by liberating some of these parts. So I'm just going to get the base up first and just tidy up the ends where it's been removed from the sprue. And then uh, as it says here in the instructions, insert the post. It's an interference fit so that should be alright, although what I am actually going to do is just to make sure it doesn't self dismantle at a later date. I've got some Humbrol poly cement and I'm just going to put a tiny, tiny amount that will then let the uh, post kind of interference fit and it should all stick together. Platform unit to the top so that's this piece just here. Let's put that to one side. And again, sharp craft knife. Just to free that from the sprue. Just check we don't have any blemishes. If needs be, just very carefully tidy them up. And uh, that is our top of the head. Make sure we get that the right way around. That is very important. And uh, so what I'm going to do again, where's my glue gone? There it is. I am going to just put the tiniest, tiniest little dab of glue 
And this will soften the plastic, not the metal of the post, um, but that should then mean that the uh, post stays in place. Now I'm going to try and get these to line up. You want it this way round. And just look down, squinting down, and just tweak it. So there we go. And there's the post and uh, you can see there the signal starting to come together. So the head goes in, let's just check out the head before, ah yes I see. So we do assemble the signal fully before we um, start putting in the wiring. So that's fine. A little bit of glue. It says that you generally don't need the glue but uh, I think it just helps a little bit. And just to squint down the post, making sure that all is true. That's about right. Actually, this glue is going off fairly quick, which is, I guess, a good thing. Let's just start building up some of the rest of this kit. So, we need, what do we need next? The ladder, I guess. The ladder would be a good start. It's a lovely little kit and not all that difficult. I'd say that this is more than suitable for a novice. And signals can be quite expensive if you buy them ready built. So by using these kits, I think it's a great way to add to your model layout without necessarily having huge extent, uh, expense. And this kit cost me less than £10, which I think is pretty good value for money for what you get. Of course, it doesn't come with the switch. You'll have to source that separately. You need an on-on type switch. Uh, you can get these from uh, Pico and indeed uh, online, any um, any online retail, someone like RS Components maybe, um, will have those in stock. So you don't need to buy the, the Pico ones, which are perfect to, uh, uh, to just uh, buy and forget. And they fit nicely in the little consoles as well. But they can be a little bit expensive. Right, let's have a look. So this ladder fits in and I believe it needs to be trimmed to length. So uh, let's have a look. We need to trim it to there. And then we can very carefully glue, glue, and this should just go straight on into place. Have I got the right way around? Yes, I have. So slowly build this up. Uh, we've also got ladder braces need to go in somewhere in the middle of those. We've got the uh, hoop for the top. And the whole range has uh, quite a few different types of signals. You can get home, distant, junction, and different eras as well, which is also, I think, quite important. I've gone for the earlier style with the round top heads, but if you're doing a modern image layout, then of course it's always a good idea to uh, see what is suitable for the period that you model. And we also have location boards, telephone diamond. If you're going to put the telephone in, you can put it in, but actually where this is going uh, actually, no, we've got, we've got the kit. Let's, let's put it all in. So, 
what else do we need? Uh, let's refer to the yeah. Right, let's get that out. And this out. Some of these fitments can be added once you uh, have built and positioned the signal, if you so choose. So we're going to make sure we get this the right way up. And I'm not sure that this will hold it perfectly well. Oops. <laughs> Yeah, that's what happens when you, you rush in. Go, I don't need to wait for glue to set. But this Humbrol polystyrene cement's not quite as quick <laughs> as I've grown used to with, uh, um, I, I think I've been using super glue far too much, it has to be said. Uh, but I've run out of super glue, so I'm gonna have to just uh, make do with, uh, with this. And it's not really working, so. And let's get location board. Uh, I think we'll come back to that. Let's go for getting the LEDs in place. So it's quite an easy color code on these. So as you can see, what we've got is um, yellow for the distant, green for the, uh, uh, the clear, and uh, then we've got a common return through these sort of like white stroke gray wires. So what we want is uh, the green goes to the top and the yellow goes to the bottom. So these wires come pre bared What I'm gonna do is very carefully pick this up and then these get fed down the hole. The bend on the wire does make things a little bit tricky. And these then just come out through the bottom. And then the LED, the way it's actually wired in is really great because they're at the right angle to just push fit in. And just going to very carefully push it in there and then we get the next one they do feel quite substantial wires actually I'm always worried with kits that the wires kind of um, fall apart on you but these do feel pretty good so again just feeding that through and then Again, just uh, push that into place. You do seem to be looking good on that front. And then what it suggests is don't glue this next part. It should just be a push fit or it says use a glue, which um, should you need to, I guess, if an LED, LED blows, um, you can get it back apart. So I'm going to use a little dab of PVA just to make sure that it stays in the right place. Tiny, tiny dab of PVA. Probably a bit too much of a dab, so let's just clean some of that back off. I only want the slightest, slightest amount. And then this becomes a push fit. That's the back of the signal on. Come on, you. And we should have our nice completed signal. Uh, some of these other details I'm going to have to see to once we're in position, I think. Now, below the baseboard, what we need to then do is that the common returns need to go to the resistor. This is important. If you don't use the resistor, you will blow those LEDs. So I'm going to solder these to this, uh, and I'm going to do that before I push it down through the baseboard, I think. And then uh, I'm going to start looking at where I'm going to put this on the layout. 
I've got some tails soldered onto the wires from the signal. I've got the resistor in place with the common return. And you're thinking to yourself, you've used all green wire. Yeah, because that's all I've got. So what I've done is I've used a permanent marker just to mark up the end of the extension to the common return. And the other two, it doesn't actually really matter because it will be wired up into the switch and I can switch them around if needs be. The location I've decided for this, uh, I'm going to try and fit it here for the line down the, um, the actual incline. And it will be the distance to that signal in effect. Uh, but don't tell anybody because the semaphores don't actually work. Although I would like to replace them maybe with some Daypole ones in the future. I think that might be quite nice. Um, another project for another day. But I'm going to fit the signal there. And I've taken a look underneath the layout. And with the aid of a little bit of light, um, it's very difficult to see. But just up there... What we've got is, uh, I'm just going to see if I can just point it out to you. It's a bit boring to look at underneath there. And I'm going to have to use some kind of tube, I think, to get the wires through. So I found in my scrap box a piece of plastic tube. And I think the first job is going to be quite simply to put the hole in and then feed the tube down and through. And uh, then I can put the wires in afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that tube in. Just drilled a hole, cut the tube to length and it slides right down through the scenery to the underside where I can just about get to it. And that means that when I feed these wires through, they're not going to just disappear and tangle into some mystery crevice inside the scenery. So I'm going to get on now and just feed them through, get them out underneath. I can then uh, uh, get them test set up. I'm going to do that before I get the signal fastened in place. And then once uh, every, I know everything's working, I'll glue the signal in. And I'm just going to build up around there with a little bit of uh, terrain and scenery so you won't see that white tube and it will all kind of blend in. That is the plan. It's all been plumbed into the rat's nest underneath here. So somewhere underneath there, there's three wires that are going from just up there. There they go. And uh, the signal is in position, just not fastened in. And over here... I've got uh, the switches, it's going to be on the middle one because that was the spare one. So um, I use a Gauge Master Model D and I use some of the track output so I can turn the voltage down. So I'm going to just turn this up, let's give it about four and a half, five volts. And uh, well, it'll, it'll work regardless. Um, so we'll get one of the LEDs and there it is. Yes, we've got the yellow. So I'm going to flick the switch, we should have green, and we do have green. That is brilliant. So I'm going to get on now and fasten it in, do some scenery around it, final uh, tidying up, and then uh, I will have the signal up and working. Quite an easy project, I have to say, so far. Famous last words, I should save that until I've actually finished putting it all in. With the signal now in place and working, all tested, then my thoughts turn to where I'm going to put the bonfire and the brazier. And actually, I think that this area just by the Tin Chapel is probably one of the best locations for it. I've done a little bit of extra detailing here. You may notice the uh, like railway locomotive type boiler. And this is uh, from Enwind 3D. You might remember them from when we reviewed uh, the 3D printed locomotives. And uh, it's all painted up in a kind of rusty color, bedded in, but it has some really nice detail to it. So just from around here, you can just about make out the tube plate inside the smoke box area. And it's a nice little scenic detail. So I've glued that in there, but uh, the bonfire and the brazier, I'm gonna work to get into this area. So first things first, I'm gonna go here for the bonfire. I don't have a hoover, so the best thing to do with the detritus is to brush it through the hole. I've got a piece of paper down underneath. And then now uh, we've got the bonfire. All we need to do with this, try and get them down and through. And then just feed 
wires down and in. I'm going to go out on a roll and say it works. We tested it before. So a little bit of glue. Let's get this down and into place. Now that they're in, I can turn my attention to the brazier. And uh, the brazier here, um, let's see where we should put this. I think I said at the back. So I'm just going to move those curves out of the way, put that down there. And I think what I need to do is decide on the final location. Uh, I'm thinking over here, but it has to be said that actually, let's go on a roll and uh, I think putting the brazier in, let's put it in here, right here. And again, it's made of a little bit of a mess. Some of that wood and rubbish will actually probably glue down and look like the kind of stuff that's been tramped across to uh, uh, the brazier over the course of it being used. So again, carefully feed the wires in, find the wire, pull it through. And then as we get down to here, we dab the glue in, get it down and in place. There we go. Once the glue sets, that should keep everything nice and secure. Afterwards, from a scenic point of view, we can sort out a lot of things. So underneath, what I'm going to do is just wire them together, red and red and black and black. And that will complete this part of the build. Um, get them in, wired up. I'm going to use some brown scatter, very, very carefully glued around them to look like something where people have tramped around them. Uh, get that glued down as well. And the top side area is done. It's just a case of getting all the wires strung back to the actual controller. I've got them in, glued in, wired up underneath and uh, managed to trace back to the power feed and uh, well, somewhere in that rat's nest but I plugged them into one of these. Now this is actually an old Hornby 00 on on switch, but if you wire something to just one side of it, it becomes an on off switch. So if I switch that on, then over here at the bonfire and the brazier, they both work. And actually that looks really nice. And you can see that slightly randomized flickering effect and they're both different from each other, so they don't end up twinkling in unison, which is very important, even though they are plugged to the same power supply. So I'm really pleased with those. Um, just a quick reminder for you, they're from Scale Model Scenery. I did buy these, they're not uh, review samples, but I am really pleased with the results. So if you're looking for anything like this for your layout, just uh, check them out. We've got a link in the description box below. And that leaves us to the final item, which I showed you, which is the speed signs. And I'm uh, going to move on and uh, plant a couple of those around just to complete the scene. I'm giving them a quick coat over with that Humboldt number 99. It's looking a bit washed out. If you want them to look more like they've just been painted, then uh, give them another coat or two. But I quite like this faded, washed out look. So. I'm going to use the Stanley knife and I'm going to just free up some of these from the sprue. Which is actually a bit tricky when... Uh, right, I'm just trying to see what I'm doing. It's, it's quite... <laughs> but there we go. Bouncing wildly all over the place. So I've got these off and they've got quite an interesting base there. What I'm going to do is use a very small drill bit just to drill a pilot hole and then a dab of glue and they'll go straight in. Now they also come with this selection of direction arrows and what these are for is where say you have um, a point and the track forks off. You can put these on the speed restriction sign to denote which route has that speed restriction. So I'm going to use a couple of these. Uh, I've got in mind a location that uh, I think that would really benefit from having some of these signs. And 
it will require a couple of these they do give you plenty enough for um uh, to do pretty much anything that you could imagine where did that fly off to i have no idea where that one went <laughs> um so it's probably a good thing that they give you plenty of these they are actually quite hard to see and then what i need to do is let me just find my glue again i'm using this just because it's convenient normally i'd use the uh, very watery liquid poly with a brush uh, but as this is here i'm going to make good use of this so i've got a pair of tweezers and we just use that to manipulate these so put a little tiny dab and then the arrow is going to go on there like that leave that to dry and do we have another 25 now i'm going to have to get another 25 off here i want them both the same because it's two different tracks on a scissors crossing so this is also going to have an arrow on but i'm going to want that to go the other way and so we've got the arrow points that way on that one and that way on that one maybe a bit higher up and there we go so that's 225s and then the rest of these i'm going to dot around and i'll save the unused ones on the sprue uh, and they'll go into my spares box because i'm sure that they will come in very very useful and probably actually mostly get dotted around where yard over the next um next few weeks or so or months as i feel like tinkering so we've got all these. I'm going to find a very small drill bit, which I will use to drill the pilot hole. So bring onto center stage my bits and pieces box, which also contains all my drill bits. I have a rummage. And there it is. This is the drill bit I want to use. Don't want to go too tiny, otherwise it's more likely to actually snap when used through ballast and then let's go and find somewhere to plant these speed signs and uh, see how well they look this is the area where i'm planning for them you see the scissor crossing so I have some speed restriction signs that will point for each of these two tracks just for going across the diamond and then i'm going to pepper a few others around this area and uh, i think as well maybe have one just as uh, trains go over the hump um, and then maybe a few more around here so this is the general area where I think that they're really going to benefit so they've gone in and we just about see it there so 30 mile an hour one and I've put in some others down here the glue will dry they're actually, actually they are actually quite subtle I like them and there's a few more sprung up over there. We've got the 100 on the far line and then the 225s denoting the different uh, turnouts as well. And they just add that little bit of something extra to a scene. I think the final one I actually put in over here just because I could. And you could also have a pile of these just uh, by a plate layers uh, chucked in the cess. I have seen them discarded, especially when they were rebuilding Manchester, Victoria. I can remember a lot of these just getting chucked to the side of the tracks when they were remodelling everything. And a lot of them, I think, just stayed there for a great many years, rusting away. But hopefully that's taken you through some of the little projects that have been going on here on Weir Yard. Don't forget as well that we've got some uh, links down in the description box to help you find these products as well. And it just shows the kind of little jobs you can do around a model railway to improve and enhance them. So you know, a model railway is never truly finished. That is very, very true. And certainly even though we're yard is, I, I do jokingly say, well, you know, I've done everything now. It's all finished. No, it isn't. There's always ways you can improve and tweak and add extra bits. 
and it's been quite a fun day building all of this up. I hope this video has been really informative and enjoyable for you to watch. Don't forget to tickle that like button and also share the love by sharing the video on social media and uh, help the channel to grow. And if you haven't already done so, do subscribe to the channel. And you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, take great care of yourself. Hope to see you again. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic. Makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian Smith, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Trish Bits, Sparky 107107, George Butterini, Andy Finch, Chris Moss, Robert Sears, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grant Line Products, and Judge Mortis. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.